All right, this is Quintus Curtius here. It's January 26th, 2024. Just received an email earlier today from a reader, and I wanted to talk about this here as the subject of tonight's podcast. And this is a gentleman, looks like he's a, a young second lieutenant, and he says that he's been newly commissioned and in the midst of his basic officer leadership school. And he says he recently failed an important test by only a single point, which caused him to get uh, recycled in his course. And if the, for those of you who don't know, recycled means it's a military term when you uh, have a problem with a course, like you get, you get injured or you um, can't complete the course for some reason and you have to go and do it all over again. And that can be a real uh, traumatic thing for a lot of guys because it really sucks to have to go through a course and then have to redo it all over again. It can really be kind of a, a morale suck. So uh, he's not really too happy about this. And he's, he's basically saying, um, you know, he felt really embarrassed about it, kind of felt humiliated. And he wanted to know, he says, I'm wondering if you ever had any significant failures during your career or your law practice? And if so, how did you deal with them? Uh, how do you look back on these failures now? He says he's trying to keep the morale up, but he just wants to hear some encouraging stories. And all right, this is a very good question. And the first thing that jumps out at me here when I read this is the old truth that failure is essential for success. Failure is what impels you to greater and greater successes. Whoever told you guys, whoever told you that life was some sort of unbroken, constantly upward sloping trajectory of successes, life is not like that. It doesn't work that way. You are going to experience peaks and valleys in your life. You're going to have highs. You're going to have lows. And for some of us, those lows can last a long time. So you have to just, <coughs> excuse me, you have to just get out of your mind this perception. And I don't know where people get this. I think it's from the media, from other people talking trash online or whatever, that everything is always great. It's not going to be great, okay? In fact, in the world of karmic equivalence, if you want to call it, there's a rule that I've often noticed, and it seems to be that in the universe, any successes you have seem to be counterbalanced by an equal amount of failures. Now, if you're one of those rare individuals who can outpace fate, who can beat the odds and can... Uh, end your life with the balance sheet far in excess of, of successes over failures. Hey, God bless you. You know, I'm sure there are people out there like that. But for most of us, it doesn't work like that. And frankly, I think for most of the people that really are deep, that really are what I would call wise, that things are like that. There is no constantly upsloping trajectory in your life. There's always going to be failures. Failure, you need to stop looking at as a negative thing. Failure is just time. Failure is just putting it. Failure is just paying your tuition. Failure is the tuition that you have to pay to reach those successes. You're going to have it. Okay. My military career was very short compared to a lot of guys. I was on active duty for four years and then I had a period of uh, reserve duty. Then I went back on active duty for about, you know, uh, five months after that. And then, then I resigned. I, I was out. But during that time, of course, I, had, I made terrible mistakes. I made terrible mistakes. Mistakes so painful that I look back now and I think of some of the things that I said and did and thought. And I say, I just want to just kind of cringe, you know, when you think about it. Leadership mistakes personal personnel mistakes, dealing with people, handling situations, all sorts of things like that. Naive, naivete, believing things that people told me, not knowing how to handle cer certain situations, not being able to read between the lines with people, just things like that. And, you know, when you first think about things like that, your initial instinct is to cringe. But then you say, you say, look, I was young, you know, 
I was only, I was in my early 20s. What the hell did I know? We all have to learn. There is no roadmap. There is no guidebook. There is no, this idea that you're going to have some mentor out there who's going to show you. Yeah, maybe there are guys that do have that. And if they do, hey, God bless them. But for most of us, I think mentorship is more like you just pick up snippets of information here and there from whoever you can pick it up from. And there really is no grandfatherly or fatherly figure hovering over you telling you what to do. It just doesn't happen. And in my legal career, you know, I started practicing law in 1998 and it's now 2024. So it's been, you know, over 25 years. It's been a long time. And again, the same thing. You're always making mistakes. I still make them today. And it's just, it's part of the game. You know, mistakes you make with with cases, with handling cases, with handling trials, with dealing with clients, what things to say to clients, what not to say with to clients, how to handle uh, business aspects, uh, you know, the, the, the technical aspects of your business, uh, how to deal with people, how to deal with receptionists, how to deal with secretaries, how to deal with um, opposing counsel, how to deal with other lawyers. There's a million things, and it seems like you are never really at the point where you're at the end zone. And I made a podcast about that many years ago, and it was called "You Never Reach the End Zone." You can find it on my site. But you never really you're you're never going to reach a point where you're going to be like, "Oh wow, man, I'm just coasting right now. Everything is great. I finally broken the code. I have finally found the key." Okay, it doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. And you know what? It's good that that doesn't happen because we have to be kept on our toes. If your mind is active and probing and searching, you're always going to be inquisitive. You're always going to be searching for ways to better yourself and and ways to better handle certain situations. So, you know, yeah, this guy says, you know, he got recycled because he failed some event by a very, very small margin, and he's got to take it over again. Okay, yeah, it sucks. That really sucks. But you know what? There's another way to look upon that. Think of how much better you're going to know the material when you go through it the second time than everybody else around around you. I remember reading years ago uh, some biography of Winston Churchill. I can't remember the specifics, but I do remember uh, when he was a boy, he was in school, and I guess he had some sort of learning disability or dyslexia or... Uh, he was kind of a discipline problem, I think. And I guess he failed some uh, course of instruction or class. And he had to complete his the English class over again. And he said, or the biographer said, that having to go through this English course a second time and to be exposed to these uh, prose writers and poets and to have to uh, learn this material a second time. It, it made it sink into his head that much better. It had a very profound impact on his his uh, rhetorical and literary abilities, the seeds of which were maybe planted by that uh, that event. So what seems like a curse can very often turn out to be a blessing. You don't know if getting recycled is going to be a bad thing. You can't predict if that's going to be something good or something bad. Does it suck? Yeah, it sucks because everybody else is graduating. You're going to have to go back and start over. It sucks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, it, 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 it sucks, you know. But you have to keep on going. You have to keep on rolling. You have to keep on trudging, putting your head down, braced against the headwinds, and keep moving forward because there's no other way. There's no other way. But if you think that success is one of these things that just lands in your lap out of the sky, it just it just arrives on your doorstep like a meteor out of the sky, you're wrong. Success is the outcome of many, many painful failures. And the guys who never experience failures or experience very few failures are the ones who are too chicken shit to do anything. And I firmly believe that. You need to be pushing the limits. You need to be probing, testing, uh, pushing yourself, trying to see where the limits are and see what the boundaries of your knowledge are and how you can push beyond those. That's just how it has to be because the alternative is stagnation. 
And once you experience stagnation, you can slip very, very into a death spiral where you just never grow, you never learn, you become basically a shell, an empty, bitter shell of a man. And I have seen that too myself all too often, all too often. So that's my response to this young man here. You know, it, it um, yeah, I have, you know, if I had any, have I had any significant failures in my uh, career, in my life? Absolutely, I have. I've had many of them. But we have to remember, it's not the road. It's the final result that matters. Uh, George Washington, the father of our country and the commanding general of the Continental Army, which he commanded from 1776 to 1783 during the American Revolution. He lost more battles than he won. He lost more battles than he won, but he ended up winning. Why? Because he stayed in the field. They tried, but they could never eliminate him. They tried to wear him down. They tried to degrade him. They tried to whittle away his forces. And for a time there, it wasn't looking too good. Go back. If you really read about the American Revolution, you may be surprised at just what a tough son of a bitch George Washington was. And he did it with dignity and grace. And there were times during the initial years of the war, you know, times like Valley Forge and some of the uh, uh, aftermath of some of the big battles where he got trounced by the, uh, the British and their mercenaries. Things were not looking too good. And it may, have, it may very well be true that without French intervention, we may not have uh, been able to pull that off. We may not have prevailed. We don't know. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, he prevailed. He was able to keep his men together. He was able to keep the flag flying. He was able to stay in the field. And he was able to keep on fighting. And that's what it takes. That's really what it takes. You've just got to last long enough. He who lasts long enough will eventually triumph. And this is a truism and one of the truest things I know. You've got to stay in the game because sooner or later, everybody's luck turns for the better. Sooner or later, the worm turns for everybody. So that's what I think about that question. That's what I'll say about that. So I will sign off here until next time. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.